Good day students, today we will be discussing about satellite image processing techniques. Of course, before going to the various aspects of image processing techniques, let us see some of the important aspects of satellite, uh, how your satellites are used to acquire information. So, in, in general we say remote sensing, remote sensing as all, you, all of you know is nothing but the knack or art of acquiring information about an object without being in physical contact with the object. So, let us, let us understand that without being in physical contact of the object. Of course, do not get confused with remote sensing and remote control. So, remote control in fact, we all will have a kind of a control, we will be using it very frequently in our, at our homes, but where in which we will have a equipment with which you can control the aspect. Whereas, in case of remote sensing, it is not like that. We try to understand or acquire information about an object without being in physical contact with the object. So, this is what the topic is satellite image processing techniques. As I was just telling you, remote sensing techniques are nothing but acquiring information about an object or about an area from above the surface that is from say space. So, that is the most important thing. Of course, it can also be from air. So, invariably satellite remote sensing and aerial remote sensing, there are two ways in which you can acquire that sort of an information about an object. What is the need or how what exactly we will be working with in the sense we will be trying to understand the various aspects or characteristics what is present on the earth surface right from land resources, water resources, whatever is that that is without being in contact with that from a distance. What is the requirement for remote sensing that very important con context is that it, it depends on the electromagnetic radiation or the electromagnetic energy which is available free of cost that is the most important thing will be available as a free of cost energy which is emitted from or emitted by the objects and that energy which is reflected by the objects are captured using a methodology. So, let us not go into that detail right now. Let us talk about what is that electromagnetic radiation, how is it available, where is it available, where from it is available and let us see how various objects react with respect to the electromagnetic radiation and how we will be capturing the reflected or the emitted energy by the objects. So, that is what is important. So, what exactly we will be doing is we will be looking at the physical nature of the objects which are spatially distributed. So, that is in other words spatially distributed objects are seen from various altitudes. Of course, previously remote sensing was done from a very very high altitude relatively now because of the advent of improvement in technology we find that remote sensing is being done at, uh, at lower level say even from 150 kilometers from above the surface. Let us see the other aspects as I was just telling you right now platforms which are normally used to acquire remote sensing data that is those platforms which are used for acquiring information from uh, space or from air first and the foremost right from a long long time it is the aircraft. Aircrafts could be low, medium and high altitude as I was just telling you 1 kilometer, 2 kilometers, 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers depending upon the application, depending upon the study normally satellites are I mean these aircrafts are uh, flown at a height of 1 kilometer, 2 kilometers or 10 kilometers from above the surface and uh, it is photographed. Of course, nowadays images are also taken using uh, your aircrafts. Initially for a long long time photographs were taken and we will see that aspect at a later day. Next important is that what level of information you, are, you require. So, that is what we say higher level of spatial detail. So, the better or the greater spatial detail if you require you go for aircrafts. Of course, the only difference between aircrafts and spacecraft is that uh, you find that these are inordinately expensive in nature, but still after all uh, with depending upon the purpose and the uh, application we use either aircrafts or satellites uh, for our uh, remote sensing purposes. Next we could talk about the satellites. Satellites again we say about two important satellites one is your polar orbiting satellite and the other one is your geostationary satellites as the name indicates polar orbiting satellites those satellites which will be going around from one pole to another pole in, uh, invariably from north pole to south pole and it will be going around the earth surface and that is one type of satellites. The other type of satellite is your geosynchronous satellites as the name indicates it synchronizes the speed of the earth and it will be always looking at a specific location. Whereas, in the first case namely your satellites which sun synchronous in nature normally goes around the earth surface wherein which it will be seeing various parts of the earth at a given time. 
Whereas in the case of geosynchronous satellite, exclusively all the time throughout its lifetime rather, it will be looking only at one part of the earth's surface. That is why it is called a geosynchronous satellite. Sir. So, please bear that in mind. These are two things which are very important as far as the satellites are concerned. Now, the first type satellites which are going around the earth's surface namely we call it as see polar orbiting satellites. So, as we just look at the geostationary satellites, we are talking about the geostationary satellites. Satellites are two types basically they are polar orbiting satellites. Those satellites which are normally orbiting at an altitude of 800 to 900 kilometers from the earth's surface uh, initial stages. Off late satellites are also orbiting at an altitude of 150 to 200 kilometers depending upon the type of satellite. There are numerous uh, uh, varieties of satellites which are going around the earth's surface. As the name indicates polar orbiting that means it will be going around from one pole to another pole say from north pole to south pole and so on so forth. Whereas, uh, other type of satellite which are also equally important for various applications namely it is called as geostationary satellites. As the name indicates it will be looking at a particular part of the earth stationed towards a particular part of the earth geostationary and uh, you just see at the height at which it will be orbiting at an altitude of say 35,900 kilometers or roughly 36,000 kilometers is the height at which these uh, um, satellites will be orbiting. And as I was just telling you as it is always looking at a specific uh, place throughout its lifetime 24 hours uh, orbit will be there and it will be just looking at only one particular uh, place of the earth surface. Invariably well, let us see the different types as it is the first as I was just telling you is your polar orbiting satellites or the other one is your geostationary satellites. Let us talk about the geostationary satellites. As I was just telling you stationed towards a particular part of the earth and these are very characteristic as they look at one part of the earth and they are the most important satellites which are used for say telecommunication purposes and weather, weather forecasting purposes. So, that is what is the most important thing. Initially they thought that it will not be possible for India to go for weather forecasting or telecommunication using geostationary because it is a very expensive process. But after a lot of uh, deliberations uh, way back in 1980s, uh, they started working on this and they were successfully able to launch satellites uh, and uh, through with the help of foreign countries. Of course, off late we are using our own technique uh, or methods to launch our own satellites. You know, you must have heard about Sri Harikota launching uh, station where we will be launching the satellites on our own. Now. So, these geostationary satellites I was telling you are uh, looking at one third of the earth surface invariably one third of the earth surface or throughout its lifetime. Hence, uh, if we just consider one third, uh, then we can say that uh, for to cover the entire earth uh, at a given instance during any part of the time, we, we have we require a minimum of 3 is not it, we require 3 satellites to cover the entire earth surface. In fact, uh, we talk about uh, something like a live cricket match which is going uh, which is next door next to you. It does not mean that just because you are next door to a uh, cricket stadium or a football stadium that you does not mean that you will be receiving the data directly. So, entire thing will be coming only through the satellites. Even if you are close to the, the place of uh, the of, uh, event, uh, these data are normally sent uh, through the you must have seen huge dish antennas placed uh, outside these event places, where in which it is passed through the uh, dishes to the uh, satellite receiving stations, uh, which are normally placed in the unit uh, your uh, New Delhi, where in which uh, again it is re relayed to the uh, yeah, viewers. So, so that is the way we normally get the data. And obviously, as I was just telling you, whenever you are looking at uh, watching uh, your uh, news uh, invariably, the, you will find at the end of the news normally they just show you the weather forecast. And you must have seen uh, uh, during that particular uh, time at the, uh, while they are showing that map of India, they would have just drawn uh, on a um, uh, global uh, scale, you will you will find the entire uh, globe or uh, a part of the globe uh, which will be displayed there and they would have drawn India map or uh, just outline of India indicating which part we are looking at. Then we will know which where you are where you are looking at, and we will be they will be describing how, how the uh, weather is that and that particular day, isn't it? So this is what we is our general experience for the general public. Otherwise, as a remote sensing scientist, we should know what is the importance of that. So it's not only that we take try to use uh, these satellites for weather forecast. Uh, we also use it for say disaster management. So one of the major applications of this remote sensing, uh, this particular type of satellites is your disaster management, uh, weather forecast, and telecommunication. That's all about you or say geostationary satellites. Of course, maybe other small small applications may be other major major applications are these three. I uh, was just telling you about the satellites uh, which are polar orbiting in nature. 
as the name indicates polar orbiting satellites. Those satellites which will be normally orbiting at an altitude of 800 to 900 kilometers much above your as uh, above your atmospheric uh, attraction. So, whatever is there that particular sat those satellites are, are normally orbiting from one pole to another pole say we just observe very carefully how just it goes. So, when you just look at the satellites it just goes like this around the earth surface. So, when it is going like this you find the characteristic feature of the earth comes into play here. What are the characteristic feature of the earth as all of us know very well that uh, earth has got a very characteristic uh, feature namely it revolves on its own axis and also goes around the sun is not it. So, revol revolves around the sun also rotates on its own axis. So, when it is rotating on its own axis you will not be seeing the earth surface at any point uh, re repeated rather. So, at the same time it is not only rotating on its own axis or it also goes around the sun. So, when it is going around the sun and also rotating an axis that particular um, uh, analogy has been used to the advantage of remote sensing um, applications. So, where in which uh, what they try to do is or what they tend to do is that. So, we, we see uh, the satellites are launched in such a way it just goes around the entire earth surface throughout uh, uh, its lifetime at a given time it will be looking only a part of it. So, when you just look uh, at the uh, image very carefully you will find that uh, satellites are going around the earth and how it is going a kind of a strip of land a, a part of the land is looked by the satellite. So, that part of the land may be depending upon the type of satellite and also uh, the various uh, other uh, details you will find it will be some uh, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 170 kilometers and that width is called as the swath width. So, yeah, as you can see in the, uh, in the image you, this is the swath width. So, this is the total area covered by the satellite at any given time. So, by the time the satellite goes around like this. So, what will happen? What would have happened to earth surface? Earth surface would have rotated on its own axis also gone around the earth surface. So, that is the best part of it. You can see on the left and the right. So, you see a part of the uh, globe and uh, the satellite going around and uh, by the time it makes one complete round uh, this uh, earth also would have rotated and also revolved around the sun. So, this technique uh, the analogy has been used very effectively in remote sensing and we find that uh, this particular satellite will be covering the earth surface uh, in a uh, period of time. It is not that it can cover uh, entire earth at a given time normally it will take uh, about uh, say 16 days to 21 days depending upon the type of satellite and also the width of the swath uh, which it is covering. So, when you talk about that particular aspect we say that by the time the satellite completes one complete round around the earth surface the earth also would have rotated and also revolved around the sun. That means, when I am seeing now an INST or whichever place we are, we are, we find that after a particular time this particular satellite would not be seeing uh, the uh, after one rotation it will not be seeing the same place. It will be seeing some other part of the city or some other part of the uh, say our state or India whatever is that. So, period of time it takes 15 to 16 or sometimes even 21 days depending upon as I told you this what with uh, the time taken will be 21 days to complete one complete rotation one complete coverage of the earth surface. That means, if I am seeing today this particular place or a spot or after 15 days only I will be in a position to see the same spot again. Now, so what the satellites are designed in such a way? Normally, it is rotating at the speed of the as you know the earth I was telling you it depends on the rotation of the earth and as far as you are say the um, revolving. So, the it synchronizes with the speed of the earth. The satellite also will be synchronized with the speed of the earth with respect to the sun. Hence, we call it the sun synchronous satellites. So, these satellites will be covering part of the earth at the given time and over a period of time only it will be covering the entire earth. So, as I was just telling maybe 16 days, 21 days. Of course, nowadays we also have satellites covering at 12 days because the larger swath width. Of course, there are satellites which will take longer time provided it covers a less area. So, actually should, what you should remember is the greater the area it is covering the lesser the number of days, the lesser the area it is covering the greater will be the number of days to cover the entire earth. So, that is what is the most important thing as far as your uh, polar orbiting satellites are concerned. So, let us see our other details. You can see that uh, different uh, satellites how they are orbiting uh, around the earth surface. So, normally I was just telling you about that. Uh, so, the uh, geosynchronous satellites 36,000 kilometers above the surface and uh, as I was just telling you what are the advantages or the uh, purpose of this satellite is your 
commercial as well as military communications mainly it's for telecommunications so these are uh, normally used for not only for uh, general uh, commercial purposes or civilian purposes also for military purposes especially ballistic missile launch you just imagine how important uh, these satellites will be or what role it will be playing in uh, military applications we also have what is called as medium earth orbit or meo we call it as so which will be used for say your navigation purposes so all of you must be using it of course uh, in our days it was not they talking about gps and even in the case of uh, uh, say in an ordinary smartphone you have gps facility so these gps uh, as you know that global positioning system and for any other uh, 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 method of uh, locating oneself maybe it could be galileo or the glonass different types of uh, methods of locating oneself uh, and that it, it all depends on the country one is your uh, gps is the us based one galileo is a russian based one glonass is your uh, european based and different uh, things so this is what this is how we normally look at it and we also have the last one namely your low earth orbit or leo so as i was just telling you it could orbit from say 80 kilometers to 2000 kilometers initially it was uh, at an altitude of 600 to 800 kilometers but uh, as the days have started passing and as i was telling you you also can imagine the farther i go the lesser the uh, detail i get and the greater the area the closer i am to the earth surface i get lesser area but better detail so it, it all depends on what kind of application i am looking at it so depending upon the application they started using or uh, designing the satellites could be from 80 kilometers or it could be up to 2000 kilometers it all depends on the application and also the country and uh, type of satellite so uh, uh, and again this also these are also used namely for say your military intelligence purposes or weather satellites and also for natural resources so this is what are the most important applications if you just look at the image uh, the slide uh, you will find how the satellites are going around so each of them are going around in different orbits uh, so the geosynchronous satellites the medium earth orbit and the low earth orbit satellites uh, so this is about the simple uh, detail about uh, how the different types of satellites goes around the earth surface well we have just gone through the types of satellites namely the polar orbiting and the geostationary satellites let us go through now about the elements of remote sensing what exactly or how exactly you will be in a position to get the details about the earth surface without being in contact with that as i just told you in the beginning let us see what is the source of energy so the source of energy or the electromagnetic radiation we call it as a signal or source of radiation is a must for any kind of remote sensing isn't it so we say that uh, that could be from say a source which is available free of cost in the sense uh, it is readily available and it is being uh, emitted by the sun or it could be a kind of energy which is reflected by the surface the land or sea or it also could be atmosphere through the atmosphere it can be there and it also could be from space or it could be generated artificially in the sense the electromagnetic radiation can be generated artificially and that's what we call it as active remote sensing so in the first case we are talking about uh, passive remote sensing that means you will not be generating any energy but you will be utilizing the energy which is already available to you whereas in the second case we talk about the active remote sensing wherein which uh, we try to generate the energy and then utilize and try to find out what will happen to the energy when it is falling on the earth surface so the first and the foremost we talk about the electromagnetic radiation other in simple words emr or electromagnetic radiation and what is that important or what you should know is that this electromagnetic radiation will be propagating through the atmosphere from the sun propagating through the atmosphere in a wavelength like format in the sense it will be reaching the surface in different wavelengths what we intend to do is that as that we will try to find out those are that part of the energy which is possible or capable of passing through the atmosphere and reaching the surface and we will not be interested in that part of the energy which is getting absorbed in the atmosphere itself as so, as all of you know most of the energy as are absorbed a part of the energy passes through the atmosphere and reaches the surface and that part of the energy and that part of the energy which reaches the surface is called as the atmospheric windows it, it, because it forms a kind of a windows through which uh, this particular energy is reaching the surface most of the energy as i told you is absorbed the x rays the gamma rays all these things and most important the ozone layer is also preventing your other uh, very he heat related uh, energy whereas that part of the energy which is reaching the surface namely the uh, main and the most important thing is your visible spectrum visible spectrum infrared that is again three parts are there namely your near infrared middle infrared and thermal infrared 
whereas uh, the visible spectrum is again split into three different uh, namely the blue, green and the red and of course last but not the least is your microwave uh, energy. And of course, we also have other energy, we will see, we are seeing the um, spectrum a little later. Just to give an idea, we also have other uh, energy namely the radio waves and the uh, television wave that is all at a slightly at a higher wavelengths. So, the lower wavelengths most of them are absorbed, the moderate wavelengths reaches the surface or the higher wavelengths are invariably as I just told you active in nature, it is all generated one that uh, most though it reaches uh, that that will not be in uh, it will not be in a position to use the energy that is that I was telling you about the energy that is especially your uh, television and the um, radio uh, waves whereas we talk about remote sensing being effectively using only the visible spectrum and the infra, uh, infrared spectrum and also the microwave spectrum these are the three uh, types of energy which is readily available to mankind and we will be using that effectively. Yes, you just look at the electromagnetic uh, waves which is uh, which is your ultrasonic windows. So, that part of the energy which passes through that uh, namely your I was telling you these are the cosmic rays, the x-rays and the gamma rays are all uh, absorbed here and we have the ultraviolet or they were just telling you the UV rays the energy uh, which is uh, generating huge uh, heat and that is being absorbed by the uh, um, ozone layer and all of you know that uh, this particular ozone layer because of the various activities on the earth surface is being punctured and this ultraviolet waves are also passing through the atmosphere and reaching the surface. Hence, uh, there is a variation both in terms of your uh, temperature and the weather changes uh, and that is resulting in say huge high temperatures or low temperatures. So, that is not does not mean that uh, always ultraviolet rays will be affecting the temperatures in the higher end, it is also in the lower end that is reason you have unexpected rains, unexpected storms and things like that. We also have high temperatures at a normal time even if you take any city for that matter even in the case of Chennai which was relatively better during the months of October, November and you find it is relatively hot and we do not know what is going to happen over a period of time. So, let us not bother with that particular aspect. So, let us see the energies which are useful to us. So, we talk about the energy namely the visible spectrum and then I told you about the infrared namely near infrared, middle infrared and the thermal infrared. Of course, we also have the microwave which is very very low in energy definitely will not be in a position to uh, handle the television and the radio they are invariably as I told you they are active in nature. Microwave also sometimes it is active and we also try to use uh, microwave to some extent uh, energy which is also available from sun's energy. So, let us see that how does it happen, how uh, the energy will be falling on the earth surface and how we are able to capture that. As you see here this is the sun and you find that uh, this is the radiation which is falling on the earth surface. So, once it falls on the earth surface it normally gets either absorbed, it gets reflected or it is emitted in the sense energy which is absorbed is re radiated. So, we have uh, the reflected energy, absorbed energy and also your re radiated energy. However, instantaneously that part of the energy which is readily available to us use your reflected energy. Of course, if I have a little problem in the sense if I have something like a cloud coverage or in the space that also might affect the my energy levels reaching the surface, it will get reflected from then and there, it will not reach the surface and that part of the energy which gets absorbed and it is re radiated. So, as all know very important is that the reflected energy. Now, let us see which will be the ideal time for remote sensing. I am just telling you uh, in a day because we, we are dependent on sun's energy in a day what do you think uh, will be the ideal time. So, just while I am telling you can just uh, uh, just think uh, to what will be the ideal time. So, let us say 6 o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock in the afternoon or mid noon. So, we say that uh, if it is 6 o'clock or uh, 12 o'clock the sun will be invariably perpendicular in the horizontal direction or in the vertical direction. So, it will not be possible or for us to use uh, that part of the energy is not it is so, 6 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock it is not possible. Hence, uh, we require a time or a period which will be ideal for remote sensing namely 9 30 to say around 11 o'clock uh, will be the ideal time for remote sensing because uh, we require a reflected energy and the angle should be there otherwise uh, it will not be possible for us to get that particular energy back. Hence, uh, we depend on uh, the sun's energy and especially the reflected energy in remote sensing and that part of the energy which is reflected by the various objects uh, on the earth surface is being absorbed. And as I told you the energy will be propagating in different wavelengths and we will be picking up uh, only that part of the energy which is required for our studies. 
Now, let us see in detail in general rather what kind of energy as I was just telling you this is your incident energy that is the energy which is being released by the sun and it reaches the surface it is independent of anything which is beneath the whether whatever you have a water body or you have a land or whatever object beneath it is not worried this energy is getting reflected here and I told you a part of the energy is absorbed here and a part of the energy is transmitted. So, the transmitted energy is not available to us whereas, the absorbed energy is re radiated and, and it is released after some time, but instantaneous at a given time you have energy which is available to us is your reflected energy. So, the most important concept in, in say your remote sensing. Now, when I talk about this particular water body we have the energy which is being reflected I told you and that part of the energy when it is getting reflected it uh, the energy is in wa different wavelengths. So, what will be the impact or what will be the impact of uh, a particular wavelength on a particular body. So, let's, let us say for example, water body I was telling you of the three different uh, types of uh, spectrums which are important namely a visible spectrum namely blue, green and red. So, what will be the effect of blue energy? So, please do not get confused with blue, green, red it does not stand for your color it is the spectrum of your uh, so, that is what I was telling you the wavelength it is a wavelength value. So, it ranges from 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 and the green is 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 and the red is 0 0.7 to 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 and the infrared ranges from 0 0.7 to 1.1. So, what is uh, uh, that I am trying to say is that what will be the effect of uh, this particular energy on the water body which of the part uh, which part of the uh, electromagnetic radiation is absorbed which part is reflected. So, that is what is important. So, when you talk about uh, water body as all of you know it is relatively clear in nature, but uh, during a day when there is not not much of uh, clouds the water will appear blue in nature all of, all of you know that particular thing. So, this blue color in nature will obviously will be reflecting the blue energy. So, as you just go away from the visible spectrum that part of the energy which is reaching the earth surface if it is a water body if it is reflecting only blue the other energy is mostly absorbed. In fact, uh, over a period of uh, uh, um, wavelength variation you will find uh, that the energy is not at all being reflected most of the energy is absorbed. Of course, there is another context uh, we say the deeper the water body the greater will be the absorption the shallow the water body the greater will be the reflection. Hence, we should remember that the energy is de dependent is independent and the objects are really either absorbing or depending uh, reflecting depending upon the energy which it is being received. So, let us see the other aspect this is what you call as the spectral signature or you call it as the energy which is being reflected to uh, on various objects. Let us see three different types namely water body clear let us presume it is a clear water body vegetation which is invariably green in color, dry barren soil which is gray to brown color. Now, what will happen to the energy as I was telling you the wavelength versus the reflectance. When you talk about the water body you see here within 0 0.5 to 0 0.4 it is relatively less 0 0.5 0 0.6 around that range it is reflecting little more when it comes to 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 that is when it is rearing infrared the energy is absorbed maximum whereas, vegetation as all you know all of you know blue color it will absorb obviously, the color of the object is green and you find 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 it is getting reflected once it is coming to red color 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 it is getting absorbed and once it reaches the infrared you find a huge reflectance. So, the entire spectrum of infrared you find that the energy is reflected by the vegetation thoroughly and again it falls down and as it goes beyond that it will be reflecting and absorbing depending upon the energy. So, we find that the water body and the vegetation behaves differently with respect to different types of wavelengths and if you see here dry barren soil you can see here this is a steady increase in the reflectance of the dry barren soil over a period of distance from the say your blue to infrared, but when you come here it, it again just increases it just falls down little in infrared that is your thermal infrared and it is again increases and falls down and it varies here in different shades. So, you find that uh, dry barren soil will be in the way in which this is the way in which it will be behaving whereas, 
the same soil if it is moisturized if it is wet in nature naturally there will be a lot of absorption it will be behaving with respect to how it behaves with respect to water. So, the greater the water uh, content in the soil you will find the greater the absorption. So, let us not go into too many details about that just get an idea different objects behave differently with respect to different wavelengths. So, that is the bottom line I want to uh, explain you.